So this is my secret formula on how to land a T6. All right, so this whole process actually begins at the perch. The very first step in landing the plane is assessing your distances. So what do I mean by that? This whole landing process is predicated upon you being able to accu accurately identify a 1000 foot reference short of the threshold or your aim point, wherever that may be. So what do I use? Most every runway will have captain's bars out here, which is a reference to tell you that you're a thousand feet down the runway. So what we can do at the perch is we look at those captain's bars and we kind of eyeball the distance from the captain's bars to the threshold. And then we kind of ask ourselves, what reference can I use to determine that same distance except short of the threshold? It's not an exact science, so I wouldn't get too wrapped around the axle about figuring out exactly a thousand feet, but this approximation is a very good tool to get yourself somewhere where you can uh, assess that, that distance. All right, so the next thing that this thing is predicated on is that once we roll out on final, that we are on a stable airspeed and we have our aim point fixed. So what do I mean by aim point? The aim point is if you were to let go of the aircraft and the plane would just go ballistic and fly on whatever trajectory you leave it on, where would the beak of our aircraft impact? The answer should be right here at the threshold, at brick one, at the seam where the runway meets the, the threshold, the grass, the underrun, whatever. But it should be this exact point. If you think that we are going to land short, that means that we are drug in, we are flying below glide slope, we're going to impact short. If you think we're gonna land long, that means that we need to reduce that power and move our aim point back down to the threshold, back to brick one. All right, so this will all be based on flaps takeoff. So if we are 105 knots, we are setting our aim point at the threshold we're trimmed up and the plane is just doing its thing on a wire. A thousand feet prior, I'm going to say, drive, drive, drive. So what that means is I want you to continue to be brave, especially if you're new to landing this aircraft, it's gonna feel very uncomfortable just driving at the ground. But that drive, drive, drive just reminds you to keep that nose dug in and do not lift back on the stick at all we are driving at that aim point. By the time we finish saying drive, drive, drive in that exact cadence, passing a thousand feet, that should get us to 500 feet short of the runway. Our next step is going to be crack. So we're gonna crack our power out, half knobs width, full knobs width, it doesn't matter, but I just wanna reduce that power setting because my final approach air speed is gonna be 105. However, I want to cross the threshold 10 knots slower than that, so 95 knots. So starting 500 feet prior, we just crack a little bit of power out, and that power will slowly begin to bleed off as we continue to come into land. After we crack, I then say drive again. So stay focused on impacting the ground at brick one, at that seam, at the threshold. Shift. So we're going to shift our aim point from the threshold two to 300 feet out. We're gonna shift our aim point out to the captain's bars. So from the top, thousand feet out, we're driving out the runway. Drive, 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 500 feet prior, crack my power, drive. Shift my aim point to the captain's bars. What this is going to do is this is kind of forcing you to round out the aircraft. So we are going from threshold to floating it out to the captain's bars. Pro tip, we're not going to be able to make it all the way to the captain's bars. If you do this right, we have a reduced power setting and we're pretty low to the ground at this point. The plane is not going to make it to the captain's bars, but we are still trying to pull that back stick pressure to just float it into the captain's bars. All right. So drive, 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 crack, drive, shift drive we're going to continue to drive at the captain's bars and then as we pass over the threshold we are going to go idle and flare so 
What do I mean by idle and flare? Power comes all the way to idle. Nose comes up into a flare attitude. So seven to 10 degrees nose high. I personally prefer seven or so. That's my preference. But we're going to do that at the same rate at which the, the runway is passing under your butt. So as the threshold comes under your butt, if we're moving quickly, so let's say we have a tailwind, you can imagine we're gonna be really scooting over the ground, right? That's gonna be idle and flare. If we have a really stiff headwind, like a 20 knot headwind or something like that, we're gonna very slowly be lumbering over that threshold. So I'm gonna very slowly go idle and flare, very slowly. The whole purpose of this is that we do not idle and flare before the threshold because we do not wanna to touch down prior to the threshold. That's game over, you lost. So once we are past this threshold, doesn't matter. Power comes back to idle. We pitch that nose up to seven to 10 degrees nose high. You should be about 20 degrees, uh, 20 feet above the ground at this time. And the last step is a big P for patience. We're just gonna be patient. If we are seven degrees nose high, idle power at 95 knots, we are very slowly going to drift down to the ground. We're gonna enter that ground effect and we're just gonna keep holding that back stick pressure, modulating to very smoothly touch down. And if you did all of this stuff properly, everything after the idle and flare, if you have patience, the plane will touch down on the main gear and it will touch down prior to the thousand foot markers. All right, so now that we've done our landing, so drive, 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 crack your power, drive, shift your aim point, drive idle and flare patience 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 touchdown we're going to talk about the patience portion which is the landing phase so once we've gone idle and flare there's the game kind of changes a little bit because we're trying to touch down there's going to be a phenomenon known as ground effect so outside of ground effect our lift is going to be a lot less and we're going to be used to a certain trajectory but once you get closer to the ground, you're gonna feel the plane kind of feel a little lighter. It's gonna slide across the runway a little better. And we're gonna to need to use a little bit of finesse to really get the plane back down on the ground. So the first thing about dealing with ground effect, especially if you had a high or a low round out, is talking about stick pressures with emphasis on pressure. When I say aft stick pressure, forward stick pressure, I'm talking two fingers two fingers worth of pressure or maybe your thumbs worth of pressure when we're talking about ground effect. I'm not saying to push the stick forward or back. It's just a very small finesse to make that happen. So if we find ourselves a little bit high and we're in that ground effect and we're like, ah, man, I want to eke it down. We're going to use just a little bit of forward stick pressure to just kind of work that plane on down to the ground. If we found ourselves, we rounded out, we're pretty hot. We're coming in a little low. I'm just going to two finger pressure, just ease back on the stick. That's going to increase our lift and it's going to just rise us up off the ground just a little bit so that we can settle the plane down in a nice, safe manner. Uh, the next thing is get your eyes on the horizon. Once we get into that flare, I'm looking all the way out on the horizon. And the most important part of that is that in the T6, when I push up the power, my left hand and my right foot is connected, right? I'm going to push up the power. I'll need to compensate with some right rudder because the nose is going to go, going to want to pull off to the left. It's going to want to rotate all that good stuff. Same thing happens when we go to idle. When I go to idle, my nose is going to go going to want to peel off to the right. So if I look out on the horizon, I'm just using rudder as required to keep that nose pointed right down the runway. If you fall into the trap of looking right in front of the aircraft in your immediate area, right in front of you, it's going to be very difficult for you to assess those very small changes in your heading. However, if we look way out on the horizon, it's going to be very easy to just see very small, subtle changes left or right. Of course, it's just like the same concept of, uh, you know, shooting out of a pistol versus a rifle. That longer focal length allows you to see very small changes and allows you to be a lot more accurate when you're landing that plane. And the last thing I got for you is to keep your nose off the runway. When you touch down and those main gear touch down on the runway, we still keep the back stick pressure in. We do not relax. We do not drop the nose down. We keep that nose up off the runway. 
and then we slowly feed in the power and a perfect touch and go is going to look like our main gear touchdown. The nose stays off, we're in a wheelie, and then we slowly lift off again. When we lift off, we wanna maintain seven to 10 degrees nose high. We don't wanna tail strike. We definitely don't wanna stall. But keeping that nose off the runway, you're going to really feel the plane wanna settle down, so we're just gonna increase the backstick pressure. As our airspeed increases, those wings get more efficient, start producing more lift. We'll need a little bit more forward stick pressure, and the plane will very gently lift off the ground. And that's, uh, that's my secret formula. I teach that to all my students. I've even got a couple kids to do touch and goes on their dollar rides, but this is how I teach students to land and this is how I learn how to land. I think it's a really great technique. So give it a shot next time. And if you have any feedback, please let me know how it went.